As you may or may not know, on August 1st, our industry will undergo one of its biggest changes in the last 30 years, if not the history of residential mortgage lending. Let's be honest, owning a home is still the American dream, but it's not an easy process. While the August 1st changes have received a lot of positive and negative publicity, they are ultimately good for our industry. These changes make the process more transparent. They make it easier for borrowers to understand the mortgage process in plain language. We truly do believe in our tagline, partners for the path ahead. We believe that partnerships are long lasting and mutually beneficial. As your partner, we believe it is our responsibility to educate you on the upcoming changes. Two of our experts today will talk to you. They are officers of our company, Phil Shield and Grace Curry. We'll highlight the changes effective August 1st. I trust that you'll take the time to get educated on the changes coming our way and how they impact our mutual clients. Hello, I'm Phil Schild. As Rick explained, this is the biggest change to the residential lending industry in over 30 years. Effective August 1st, 2015, the TILA RESPA Integrated Disclosures Rule will go into effect. The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, CFPB, finalized amendments to Reg X RESPA and Reg Z TILA that integrate existing disclosures and take effect beginning with applications taken on or after August 1st, 2015. The new loan estimate, or LE, combines the initial truth and lending disclosure and the RESPA good faith estimate. The new closing disclosure, or CD, combines the final truth and lending disclosure and the RESPA HUD-1. Part one of this video series focuses on the loan estimate. Part two of this video series focuses on the closing disclosure. In this video, we are going to specifically detail the closing disclosure. The closing disclosure combines the final till and the HUD-1. Page one of the closing disclosure is almost identical to page one of the loan estimate. The closing disclosure section starts with closing, transaction, and loan information. This is similar information from page one of an existing HUD-1. One new field at this section is the date issued. The loan term section is similar in format to the loan estimate. There are yes-no questions, and if there is a yes answer to any question, additional information must be disclosed. This form is dynamic. The projected payment section is similar to the till. A fixed rate loan with no mortgage insurance will have one column. Loans with mortgage insurance or adjustable features will have multiple columns to disclose these changes. Estimates of taxes, insurance, and assessments, such as homeowners association dues, are listed and designated whether they are escrowed. The cost of closing total should match the LE. Page two of the closing disclosure starts with closing cost details. This is similar to page two of the current HUD-1. It's an itemization and details of closing costs. The fees are shown alphabetically with no line numbers. This is a new feature. Unlike the loan estimate, fees are not rounded. There are columns for borrower paid, seller paid, and paid by others. Lender paid compensation to a broker will now show in the paid by others column. Remember, LPC is not disclosed on the loan estimate. Borrower and seller fees are listed as either at closing or before closing. There is no longer a POC indicator. And refinance transactions do not have a seller paid column. Hello, I'm Grace Curry. Page three of the closing disclosure is similar to pages one and three of the existing HUD-1 settlement statement. The cash to close section is dynamic in that any items that are answered yes must contain additional detail advising the borrower what has changed. The summary of transaction section is much like page one of the HUD-1 settlement statement. Similar to the existing final truth in lending, there are sections regarding assumptions, demand feature, late payments, and the security interest of the property. New to the form are sections dedicated to negative amortization, partial payments, and escrow account. The form specifically discloses costs associated with escrows or impounds, such as taxes, insurance, and also has a section dedicated to non-escrowed items, such as homeowners association dues. If no escrow account is established, an estimate of year one cost, including an escrow waiver fee, is disclosed. 
There is also a statement concerning future changes to the escrow account. Page 5 of the closing disclosure starts off with loan calculations which are similar to the information on the final till. This includes the total of payments, the finance charge, the amount financed, the APR, and the total interest percentage or TIP, which is a new figure. Other disclosures included are the appraisal disclosure, the contract details, and the liability after foreclosure section. The contact information section, which is new, includes details about the lender, the mortgage broker, if applicable, the real estate broker for the borrower and seller, if applicable, and the settlement agent. The last section is the confirmation of receipt, which is the same as the loan estimate. The timing requirement for issuance of the closing disclosure is new and will significantly impact when a loan can close. The borrower must receive their closing disclosure at least three specific business days prior to closing. This three-day requirement will put significant pressure on all parties involved to ensure that sufficient time is allotted so that the three business day rule can be adhered to. The days of clearing a file to close in the morning and closing it the same afternoon are effectively gone. Although these changes are significant, with proper preparation and dealing with an experienced mortgage professional, such as the associates at Homebridge Financial Services, you can be assured that your transactions will close on time. I know it's a lot of information, but thank you for taking the time to get educated on the closing disclosure. For more information, please visit homebridge.com slash August 1st. Here you'll find the first part of this video series on the loan estimate, as well as links to monthly webinars that take a deeper dive into these changes. If you're currently one of our partners, thank you for your support and your loyalty to our associates. If you're not currently a HomeBridge partner, please visit homebridge.com to find an associate or location near you. We'd love the opportunity to become your partner for the path ahead.